Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are starting our first campaign. It's the Changeling, and maybe I'll play the others. I, I want to, I want to play uh, the Kislev campaign. You know what's her face, Mother Ostankia. But no, we're gonna play Changeling first um, because, well, I can. Uh, the embargo is different for, for, for Ma, as I've decided to call it. So big, big change with this DLC, which I hope they carry on for all other DLC, and I hope they retroactively change older DLC to, to fit this. But Immortal Empires now has the narrative in it. It always used to be you could either do the narrative or have the big map. Now they're just putting everything in Immortal Empires, which I think is brilliant. I think that's really good. If you still just want to have a smaller campaign, you can still play it on the Realm of Chaos. You know, it's a perfectly good map. But Immortal Empires, it's big, and people like big. And uh, and I quite like big. Big's quite nice. Let's go with big. So we're going to play as Teach. We're going to play as the Changeling, who has an amazing opening VT. I absolutely adore this. The fact they put Wurzag in there, just how, you know... Just have him dancing is brilliant. I love it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the changeling's pretty cool. So he's immune to diplomatic penalties when trespassing. He establishes trickster cults instead of occupying territory. So you're never going to take any territory of your own. You're just going to basically manipulate everyone else's territory, which is really cool. We can also replenish and recruit in foreign territory, because of course the only territory that exists is, is foreign territory, so it kind of has to be. Um, he has to replenish somewhere, right? Also, armies are hidden in regions of the trickster cult buildings. So if you, you know, in quotes, occupy, you know, if you establish a cult somewhere, you can then, that, that cult will hide you, which feels very thematic and uh, good gameplay-wise, you know, very important. Also, you can shapeshift in battle into other legendary lords and heroes, which is hilarious and amazing and really powerful. Really, really powerful, which we get into. Also, we've got some new units. We have the Azangors and we have the Cockatrice, which is very, very cool. I really like the Cockatrice. I think it looks amazing in this game. Um, really, really fun, really powerful ability as well. That minus 10 melee attack and minus 10% speed debuff in a 35 meter range around him. Just everybody gets hit by that. Really, really powerful, like support creature, you know, with his terror and his, uh, his, his big debuffing. So I love that. Big, big fan. Also, some things have changed here. So we're going to play it on uh, hard and very hard. Although this is a bit different to normal because they've actually split up the AI stats modifier into its own little thing, which I think is brilliant because the only reason I didn't play on really high battle difficulty normally is because all of the stat bonuses they get are just rubbish. They're really unimmersive. They ruin the game for me completely because I don't really care about difficulty when it's like artificial, you know, I kind of want the difficulty to be because I've taken big chances and risks and, you know, the game is challenging me in more interesting ways than just going, oh, they're all functionally unbreakable now, so rear charging does nothing, just have, just create a line and, and kill everything with spells and artillery, like, no, I want to be able to rear charge stuff and it matter, you know? And now it does, so that's great. So we've got that split up. And then the difficulty is their behavior, which I'm pretty sure this is basically how they did um, Three Kingdoms. That's mostly how they did Three Kingdoms. The behavior changed from difficulty to, to uh, you know, from one difficulty to another in, in more obvious ways. So I really like this change. So even the lowliest enemy soldier is formidable. That technically we have overwritten by putting the stats modifier back down to, you know, standard. But anyway, enemy forces have good reaction times. So if you uh, have an order to attack artillery, then the AI will realize that and put people in the way of your know, units to save the artillery, that kind of thing. Robust range targeting selection. So they're going to pick decent targets to shoot at. They're not going to have their crossbowmen shoot at your most armored units. They're going to shoot at things they can actually damage. So really, really cool. They'll try and save, uh, sorry, try and evade spells and artillery projectiles. So if you're shooting at them with anything that they can avoid, they're going to give it a go. So really, really cool. I think this will be really fun um, change to normal. We also have the uh, end game scenarios on. I'm not going to bother messing with those because they're not going to come and conquer our territory. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. So it kind of doesn't matter except for the. Um, oh, I'll put diplomacy on those so we can still use our schemes on them. Um, I think that makes more sense. But we'll just use this as just a way to make things a bit more exciting later on. But it shouldn't hinder us in any way, really. But anyway, let's get to it. From the icy sea of claws in the north to the soaring black mountains in the south, the individuality of the Empire's provinces is much defined by its landscape. Its vast forests provide food and the materials of production, while wide rivers and traversable valleys facilitate trade and transport. Yet at times the land itself seems to strive against progress, concealing monsters and enemies of all sorts amongst its craggy passes and dark groves. Peril awaits within and without, but the nations of men have thus far proved equal to the challenge.
As the winds of change begin to stir, faint echoes can be heard. Carried on the breeze comes mocking laughter. With a flair for mayhem and an eye for trouble, the changeling leaves a trail of chaos in his wake. Each prank to be savored. As he weaves his tapestry of despair, watching as the mighty fall by their own hand. The trickster's schemes spare no fate. Let the games begin. Where to go and who to be? Very good question. Very, very good question. Because this campaign is incredibly open-ended in a way that I don't think any other campaign is. Uh, because there's no territory, right? You're not taking over territory and then your neighbours want to, to take it back, right? And then you're just having... You're constantly just going to wherever war is. Wherever war happens to be. Because the game will always make sure you're in a war or two. Um, doesn't really happen with this campaign. So it really is up to you to sort of... Go where you want to go and do what you want to achieve, which I think is really interesting. It makes it feel like more of a sort of a narrative sandbox than the sort of, I don't know, the, 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 I'm not really sure what to define the game normally as, but usually there is a sense of direction that you sort of go in just because of enemies declaring war on you, but it doesn't really happen in this one. So it's uh, going to be really fun. It's going to be a really fun one to play. So yeah, there's schemes and things. We'll get to that. Um, capture a settlement and establish a trickster cult. Well, we're going to do that straight away. We're going to go take Needling. Well, not take it, but install a cult in it. So, uh, let's get to it. And, of course, we are going to fight the first battle. Because it's the first battle. It's tradition. Let's get to it. Okay, so here is our army. It's a very good one. The fact we start with the burning chariot of siege. We've got, uh, flamers as well. And we have the changeling, of course. Hey, buddy. Very cool looking unit. I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, I love him. And we also start with another spellcaster as well, uh, who is called uh, Modrabob, the Orb Keeper. Great name. We have the Cockatrice, of course. Absolutely stunning model. Absolutely stunning. And he did a really good job of him. He's got some really good animations too. Yeah, very scary. Suits each really, really well. Uh, also, uh, no, not you. Where are you? Guys? Here they are. <laughs> the Vanguard, of course. But we have our Zangors as well. Hide the hut again. I don't even got to zoom in a little bit. But yeah, they look really good. Really, really cool. Yeah, big fan. Big fan. Uh, we also start with some uh, Chaos Furies as well. But who cares about them? They're not new and fancy. Uh, so we're going to get our flying units all together, actually. Uh, we're going to move you guys across. Get our Zangors hiding in the woods there. Let's move you guys forwards a little bit. Now let's run over here. We can start bothering these crossbowmen. If we can catch them out, that would be good. I've got to say, though, Zinch is... Um, it's a campaign I've not done any of, really. Uh, the first thing that tends to happen is I end up attacking a settlement, and the fact that we have blue horrors uh, with such a huge, just unbelievably gigantic footprint, I always get really frustrated with it. Um, I immediately get frustrated, because trying to move them around settlements is so difficult. If you have, like, melee units with a giant footprint, it's fine. You just charge enemies with them. The way you need to actually position them so they can fire at stuff, it just gets really annoying. So I haven't really bothered to play a siege campaign. But we're going to go with a bunch of Zangors, and obviously with recent patches, they have limited the amount of, um, sort of settlement battles that you fight. They have a lot more land battles now. So, actually, we should be able to avoid much of the frustration there, which I'm very happy about. Uh, even though I would like them to find a, a balance that leads to more, you know, settlement battles. I do like settlement battles broadly, but not so much with Zinch, because the giant footprint unit. So, I always find that. That bothers me a bit. Alright, come on. Let's get you out of there. 
really nice shots you're getting here. Which I like to see. Uh, nothing is really coming for us. So perhaps I will start moving out a bit. <laughs> Great hits. I'm amazed these crossbowmen aren't getting gobbled up faster. Alright, you guys are in a good spot. Uh, I'm just going to charge you through. So, again, some spells out there. This is going to upset them very fast. You know what? Let's have you shoot them. They're all done already, basically. Alright, charge them. Let's get stuck in. I know my Zangles aren't doing anything. It's uh, a bit silly. <laughs> but they will. They will, once these guys can be shooting them in the back. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Alright, in you get Zangors. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, pretty swift victory. Did we lose anybody? I'm not sure we lost anybody. Oh, maybe we lost a couple of blue horrors. They did manage to break down our shields. I think it was the flamers that broke down their shields more than anyone else, but I'll take it. Decisive victory. Marvellous work. Marvellous. Do you want talisman of protection? Not bad, not bad. 5% ward save for the changeling early on is pretty good. We also got some grimoires, which we'll be using. Uh, for mechanics that we will look at in a second. So, symbiotic trickster cult or parasitic trickster cult. You might think these make a huge difference, but they kind of don't. Um, it really just chooses what buildings are there to begin with. But you can change the buildings around as much as you want. You can build it up however you want. It really just chooses what buildings will be there um, to, to start with. So, you know, you can still tip the scales one way or the other nice and early. I think we're going to go with a parasitic one, because this isn't going to be earning much money yet. And you'll see why that's important. Uh, so, Flensburg, we already had a cult, by the way, there, which we haven't looked at yet. We just got this new guy, uh, Griggle Graber, who is a trickster cultist, which is a, a new guy who can basically go and set up um, cults. So we're going to put one in Castle Drakenhof for reasons that will become clear fairly soon. So we did do that. Uh, this was our first scheme. Again, we will look at schemes in a second. There's a lot of mechanics, okay? I, I didn't want to bog everyone down with all the mechanics before we got a battle under our belt. So, you know, we will get to all the mechanics. So your first step in a theatre should uh, so be to sow seeds of mayhem. So yeah, we took a trick, uh, we put a trickster cult somewhere. And so now we can see the entirety of the Empire. How cool is that? Really, really cool. I love it. Really nice thing to get early on. Really just sort of... If you have all the information, you can figure out what you want to do a lot better. You know, you can plan your schemes a lot better if you can see everything. So I really love that as just a, an early get for the campaign. So the greatest deceptions will require you to uh, be everywhere and nowhere. So this is what gave us the trickster cultist. Uh, it also wanted us to take needling, which we did. We got the trickster cultist. Yeah. Um, Talisman of Protection we got for the Changeling. Lovely. We have a cult in Needling. Now it wants us to use a uh, use our hero to get another cult uh, built somewhere. So we get military cults as well. This is how we recruit units, is you get your uh, military things. Again, you're just picking what will be there first, but when you're using a hero to do this, it'll be a lot higher level, so you'll get a really big um, sort of advantage over building up the buildings yourself. So I'm going to go with a symbiotic one for reasons that will become clear in a second. Um, so yeah, we got that mission. Uh, it's all, it is always amusing when fools believe their defences will keep them safe, especially when your cultists have already taken root within their walls. Too right. So let's actually look at how settlements work. So you can see there's the actual settlement and here's our cult. And we have a bunch of different um, buildings. So the things on the left is your military buildings, then you have your advanced military, then you have symbiotic and parasitic. So these are the buildings that get built initially. And these you can only have one or the other. Each building here, kind of like Cathay's yin and yang buildings, um, they, they are different sides of a coin. You can either have disguised trade or you can have raider's bounty from the other one, right? So you have to choose between the two. The parasitic ones tend to make you, get you more sort of static bonuses you know, static income and all the rest of it, um, but with higher discoverability and it tends to do more damage to the region that you're in. So the the, the people that you are uh, leeching from will suffer more. Whereas the symbiotic one actually gives them more bonuses. So if you look at disguised trade here, 
you actually get a proportion of the uh, settlement's income, or you know you get an amount based on the you know a proportion of the uh, person's income. They still get to keep their income, but they also get a bonus to their income for you being there, which is really really cool. So I really like this. Um, I find there's almost no reason to get the uh, sort of raider's bounty, like the parasitic income one. There's almost no reason to do that at all. Uh, I find. It does put up siege corruption though, I guess, but in terms of just making money, this always seems to be better because even like a max level um, one of these only gets you 450, which isn't huge. Like that's not a big one. But I guess you are limiting their income a lot, so maybe you want to do this just to, you know, hinder um, one player or another. So, it's it, you know, there's choices to be made. There's a load of other buildings as well. This one will push uh, tricks to cults to other neighboring areas as well. Uh, this will actually create a allied army, you know, loyal to you um, and destroy the buildings. But, you know, spawn an army, kind of like the Vermintide stuff that uh, the Skaven get, which is really, really cool. This will give extra uh, diplomatic relations with the settlement as you're slowly, you know, infiltrating their government, which is really, really fun. So that's pretty cool. Also puts up Winter Magic. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. But uh, we're just going to go with Disguised Trade. Uh, although it is earning basically nothing, so getting a proportion of that is going to be a bit pathetic. But um, you know what? I'm going to break my rule. There's no reason to get this. It'll be a nice demonstration. You can actually upgrade um, laterally as well, which is really, really nice. So I, I kind of adore that. So we have a Marauder's Den here as well. Uh, so this is giving us a lot of grimoires per turn. It's spreading seemed corruption quite a bit. But I think we actually want to be a bit happier here. So we're going to go with the one um, which will, yeah, just be friendlier. Um, for our opponents. I don't want them to rebel and things. I, I just want this to be good while we put up our grimoires and cult supplies. So, grimoires. Uh, that is going to be... Uh, uh, hang on. Ch yeah, changing the ways is what grimoires are spent on. So, we can do things like spread corruption and we'll unlock all these other uh, things as well. You can transfer settlement from one faction to another and a bunch of other really kooky stuff. We are going to start spreading corruption early though. We'll uh, give that to the changeling because we might as well. So there we go. Corruption is now going to spread from him. So change the ways that will cost us grimoires. Uh, so machination stemming from the changeling has led to an explosion of Zinchi and corruption in the area. You know, just for fun. Just for fun right now. So we're also going to level him up. So he has an additional tab called Formless Horror. Right now we have no forms. We haven't got any. So these will be unlocked either by uh, beating that character in battle or random quest, uh, quest rewards will just sometimes unlock the form of somebody um, from doing a quest, which is really, really fun. But defeating someone, then becoming them, and then terrorizing their nation <laughs> like in their skin is very, very funny. So I really enjoy it. Uh, oh, and you can also sort by stats, which I think is a very interesting idea. So if you sort of, you, you decide you need something particularly, then you can, you can sort by that, which I think is a really fun um, thing for them to add. They really didn't need to add that but it is pretty charming. Um, also, skills. So the big skills to look out for straight away, this will be how you make your uh, formless horror uh, work, right? It's Red Hot Jape. This will give you all of the abilities that that character has access to. So if you turn into Karl Franz, you'll be able to get the Reichland Rune Fang and all the rest of it. Uh, Gal Moraz, you know, you'll get those abilities. It always assumes that they are maxed level. Right, the person you're changing into has access to everything they can unlock. So that's really, really fun. And then, if you get 1,000 faces, you get access to all of their spells. So if you're turning into a Lauriel, then you can use all of her Law of Life and all the rest of it. Uh, so really, really cool. Really nice to um, to get those too. And they're very quick to get. So I'm going to start with Terra, and it also gives a minus six enemy leadership in the local region, which I think is brilliant. So we're going to go with that. Especially because we start with the Terra calls a unit in the Cockatrice. Um, it's going to be really nice just to sort of terror bomb everybody. We also can get some more units built. I don't really know where I want to go necessarily. I think we're going to go north. And the reason for that is because of our schemes. So you can see each theatre has its own schemes. The little eyes at the top you probably saw. Once we get five grand schemes done, we'll get the ultimate scheme. The grand schemes... There's one in each region, and to unlock the grand scheme, you need to have done three uh, other, uh, what are they called, minor schemes? 
small schemes, whatever they are, it doesn't matter, these other schemes, um, if you do these, yeah, minor schemes, then you get the grand scheme, then you get the ultimate scheme. But it's in each theatre, which is really, really cool. And these missions are really fun. So the first one we already got, we established a trickster cult in the region. That was really nice and easy. Uh, also, destroy the Fecundites. I don't want some other, you know, some other uh, chaos god benefiting from, from being in the Empire. No, no, no. It's all about Siege, all right? We're going to get Nurgle out of here, and these will be our puppets. Okay, you don't get to give our puppets a cold. It's not okay. Uh, also, sack Uldorf or construct a Ravaging Host, which is a tier 5 loot building in there. Um, win 15 land battles in the Empire Theatre. Uh, get 75 Siege Corruption in Castle Drakenhof. That's basically why I'm going over here. I want to give it that big corruption so we can get the scheme done. Uh, but also, it gives us immune to vampiric corruption for all of our armies, which is really, really cool. And it gives us a trickster rift, which I've never built before, but I think that'll let us uh, teleport between theatres, I think. We'll find out, I guess. That's all part of the fun. Also, uh, win 12 battle against dwarves, that gives us extra ward save for all characters. Oh, and this one is hilarious. So if we do um, take down Altdorf, we'll actually get a steam tank as Regiment of Renown. Which is just so charming. And if we have a look at the grand scheme, if we do this, um, it will give us the form of Eckhold Hell, Brass, uh, Empire Elect Council will descend into civil war. Very, very cool. And uh, they won't be able to reinforce in the ultimate scheme. We also get some other bits of bobs. Um, but if you look uh, here, it'll say what your reinforcements are and what the enemy reinforcements are. The more schemes we do, the fewer reinforcements your enemies will have and the more reinforcements you will have. So there's no reason to sort of stop doing these schemes. If you want to do all of them, you're going to have a very easy final battle. Um, or, you know, you can just do the bare minimum you need. Open These are eyes that'll open, by the way, and um, they will follow the cursor around. It's really creepy and amazing. I love it. These little, you know, custom UI elements are very fun. So yeah, so that's about, um, that's about it. That's about all of the random uh, additional mechanics, I believe. Now it'll just be a case of actually doing all of those quests and seeing how the journey goes. I think it's been really fun. Um, it's it's just, yeah, it's a joy. I really love this sort of freeform um, sort of campaign they've done. They just give you all the tools up front and it's up to you where you want to go. So one thing we also can't afford to do, I was going to upgrade our recruitment building, but we can't. So with the cult recruitments, this is what we need cult supplies for. So cult supplies are basically how we upgrade um, our different buildings. So, of course, if you've got a bunch of buildings that spread cults, you can end up with cults absolutely everywhere, and you can end up with loads of money, because, you know, the more cults you have, the more income you can siphon from them. But it's got to limit you in some way. So the main limit isn't really money so much as um, so much as it is these books that you need to get, these cult supplies. So, pretty cool system. I like it. I'm a fan. Uh, we can also build something else over here, actually. Nope, we don't have the money. All right, so, yeah, money is limiting, too. <laughs> Technology, way of the trickster. Really, really good early um, technology. This getting ten cult supplies per turn means you could do a you know a, a sort of a tier one cult building per turn, which is really really good. And grimoires is always nice. And casualty replenishment rate plus ten percent is pretty formidable. That is a big bonus to casualty replenishment rate. Not that we really need it. We lost two guys, so still okay. Off we go. Okay, Black Venom has been destroyed. Sucks to be them. And Way of the Trickster. Really, really good. Like, first um, technology that I love it. So every scheme begins with a seed planted in plain sight of the Changeling. Changeling's victims. We also got a level up for Modrobob. Hello, Modrobob. He's got his orb of siege. I mean, he is the orb keeper, so that does make sense. Um, wins a magic cost down for metal spells. That's actually really good. That's very fun. What's your... Oh, strong. It's a bit boring, but I guess it's not terrible. Uh, let's give you better Searing Doom. Lovely. Alright, now let's declare war on these guys so we can attack Krugenheim. Because we are going to head up this way. Alright, uh, so this one we really don't need to fight. I'm not going to bother. We've got Scroll of Shielding. And let's do another Symbiotic Cult. And I wonder, do I want to build another recruitment building in this area? I'm tempted to just get one of these in each, so I can always recruit sort of the more basic units. I think it's probably wise. And uh, this is giving us more supplies. Yeah, I guess that'll do. 
We'll, we'll get an income building at some point, because that is earning a little bit of money. We can boost that and then take it for ourselves. Uh, so we have another cult built. And we are hidden again, by the way, because there is a cult here. So you can see the little eye means they can't see us. So if you're moving into, like, enemy territory, or, well, any territory, as long as you're going to get a cult there that turn, you're hidden. So you can really be hidden in much of the map once you start spreading your... Uh, you know, your your cults around the place. Should be fun. So you also get these abilities as well. When you transform, you get extra melee attack, weapon strength, and melee defense. Uh, or you can get extra ammunition. I doubt we're going to go with missiled heroes all that often, but maybe? Maybe we will. Um, extra winds of magic and cooldown, minus 20% for all spells, which is pretty powerful. So, with these kind of abilities, you can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, whatever legendary horde, uh, legendary lord, not horde, legendary lord that you've become, you know, uh, which is really fun. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm you just better. Uh, I'd be really good if we can turn into Festus nice and early, actually. That's going to be really charming. Once we get his abilities, anyway, his abilities are really what make him powerful. Because having barriers and also we can heal people in an aura would be pretty cool. Uh, let's put up global and local recruitment. I think that's wise, because I would like to get some more recruitment at some point, and we can't just yet. I could get some ogres, though. Do I get some ogres? Ogres are fun. Let's get some ogres. I'll probably swap them out for something a bit more fancy uh, a bit later on. They're not the most subtle things in the world, but that's fine. And Gregor, of course, is still heading to uh, Drakenhof. That's fine by me. Yeah, let's grab it now then. Let's get our symbiotic trickster cult, which will be nice high level. So we'll see what it gives us. Uh, so we've just fought, we've just acquired the form of Scrag the Slaughterer from doing that quest, which is very very cool. So we get to become Scrag now. And we, we did just get some ogres, so actually that's pretty hilarious. So a new form has been acquired, allowing you to mimic the appearance and uh, powers of the impersonated individual so flawlessly that even the dark gods can be deceived. Very nice. And yep, that's the mission that we completed. Uh, and yes, I know. And he's dead. He, he dies from making the cult. That's fine. He did his job. So, you can see we have actually top tier of these things. So, the vampire counts are going to like us a lot more. And we'll get more winds and magic in, presumably in the region, though it doesn't specify. Whispers echo everywhere, reshaping every thought, according to the changes will. And we also have the um, uh, mercantile illusion. The changes and magic create a simple facade, smoothing the way towards riches and ruin. So we get 100% of the income from that settlement, and we're also boosting their income by 50%, which will give them a bit of a boost, obviously, but we benefit from that extra bonus as well. So we're getting 357, um, 375. I'm getting everything backwards today. I'm recovering from, like, the flu or something, so I'm basically brain broken, but... That's fine. We'll pretend it's all part of the scheme, right? <laughs> we'll just go with that. It's fine. So anyway, uh, really, really cool that we're getting that income. And of course, that's pathetic income for Castle Drakenhof. Eventually, this will be making thousands because it's got a gold mine. And, you know, it's Castle Drakenhof. It usually makes a ton of money. So with the bonuses we're giving it as well, that will be very, very lucrative uh, later on in the campaign. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, let's get Metal Shifting as well. Really nice passive ability every time we cast... Uh, well, just Searing Doom in this case, but any spell that we'll unlock later. Uh, we'll get extra uh, damage for all our boys, which will be very fun. Okay, let's... I mean, this guy's getting a little a little uh, familiar with us. But I think I'll, I'll leave him be. So we're going to stay in a camp so we can get some recruitment. Uh, I clicked on Regiment to Renown because I'm silly. Oh, we can recruit in Talibaglund anyway, so actually... Let's get a couple more Furies and some Blue Horrors. Cool. Bloody Spears have been destroyed. Now the Spears are bloody on both ends. Okay, so we're going to move forward some more. And... I'm just going to get more Furies, honestly. Yeah, let's get more Furies. Because this will be a walled settlement. And uh, just be able to dive on top of everything on the walls um, nice and early, I think would be very, very powerful. So that'll do. Moving on. Okay, Moon Howlers and Redhorn Tribe also did. Wow. They're not lasting, are they? Oh, wow. Needling just got taken out. 
Luckily, we have uh, the Raider's Bounty, so we're still earning from it. Actually, doesn't matter. We are still getting it. Odd that it's saying that there's income from Needling... Oh, and Flensburg. Silly. I didn't realize if you hovered over it told you everything. That's quite handy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, right, let's get the uh, Flicker of Potential, because I want to start getting some pink horrors at some point as well. Where multiple fates collide, the Great Deceiver creates a flicker of the probable into which he sends his lesser servants. That sounds quite fun. Um, that's actually earning a fair bit of money now. So do I want to transition to this? I think we'll wait until we can afford the next tier so I can get more money from it and I'll boost the income. Uh, getting that, I think, will just be a slight drop in our cash. But, yeah, let's, um, Absolutely not. let's upgrade Krugenheim's recruitment building I so we can recruit changed. from there. Uh, so this guy's a bit of a problem. I think... We might want to set up an ambush over here. Uh, we'll see if that works. He might run into it, might not. But if he does, that would be a nice shortcut. I'm not sure I want to deal with all of these units and all of these units. If he spots us and attacks us, we'll still be able to defeat him pretty happily. <gasps> One thing I need to do, formless horror, scrag the slaughterer, assume for battle. That doesn't mean that we're going to just be him in battle. Um, it just means that the ability formless horror that he has in battle when you click that he will turn into scrack it's still up to you whether you want to sort of pull the trigger or not um, you don't sort of commit to that you just commit to that button doing that rather than being scrag forever but anyway should be fun the rock skulls also destroyed and table off and skull smashers and our ambush was foiled and he didn't bite that's disappointing uh, so war host in waiting each directs his servants to assist the changeling schemes as long as the trickster continues to amass. So to allegiance points, global recruitment, local recruitment. Pretty nice stuff to have. Let's look at what other tech we can do. Uh, Lord recruit rank plus three does sound very good. I will want to get a second lord fairly quickly, uh, which might seem a bit bold, but because it's quite cheap to um, to get the uh, uh, you know, these buildings built. It's not long before you start making a ton of money. You know, all the big investment that most factions have to do in order to make money, you are then boosting that and benefiting from it. You know, you, you're already paying for your end, and yet you get all the benefits of all the work they do. So it doesn't take many sort of capital cities for you to have cults in before you start making a ton of money. So it won't be long um, before we can start putting other armies down and speeding up the whole process. I would love to get a reality wound somewhere as well. I think it'd be very fun to start spawning armies around the place. Right, do I attack? You can see I'm, uh, I'm umming and ahhing a bit here. I think I'm going to set up an ambush for one more turn. We'll see what Festus does. He might take out Talapheim, but that's fine, honestly. Um, so we do have building upgrades available over here. But nothing that I need right now. And the ambush did work, but it's not that important one, let's be honest. We found Dolph. Sorry, Dolph. Uh, I guess I get some more winds of magic. That sounds good. I love that you have that as a um, sort of post-battle option. And Hockland have been destroyed. Well, I guess Festus did his thing. Um, yeah, you are. Tell you what, let's just do teleport stance. And I'll teleport to here. Alright, it cost us some magic, I'm fine with that. He might chase us down, it might upset Festus, it's fine. Uh, although it doesn't actually upset anyone, because we don't have trespass penalties. So, we'll see. It could be that Foulback attacks us, and then her gig here, you know, will join in. Because you guys are at war, right? You're not? Okay. I mean, he even said so. Oh, uh, we've got a Tsinchian Familiar for Modrobob Orb Keeper. The extra line of sight doesn't really help us much in this campaign, but that's fine. So we're going to get full the wind for the extra cooldown on spells and uh, winds and magic cost down. And you'll notice that isn't when transformed. That's any point. Also, I love that it says, you know, I'm something but wizard myself, because that's an obvious Spider-Man reference there, which is very adorable. Um, so yeah, Red Hot Jape will be next, which will let us get the abilities from the characters that we transform into. Then we need to get two of these, and then we can get the spells as well. It's really quick to unlock everything for your formless horrors. Really, really fun. I love that. Hey, it's Nurgle. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. 
Okay. Let's get... Uh, let's get this. In Flensburg. Let's see, that's going to be 300. This will be about 300 too. So yeah, it's fine. See, this is what I mean. It, it, the parasitic ones don't really have much of a reason um, to exist outside of like, I guess you could put it in a fort, you know, which isn't going to earn any money anyway. But like, generally, yeah, the percentage one is going to be much, much better for you. Hmm. Well, this is a lot, isn't it? A heck of a lot. Um. Never. Okay, who do I attack? Because this feels this feels like too much. I think I might wander off to Brass Keep and take that one first. So these we're not actually going to be um, taking as our own. We're going to be raising these because I'm trying to wipe out the faction, which is pretty much the one time I'm going to be doing that. Everyone else, I'm happy just to, you know, infiltrate. Um, but yeah, I don't think I can take these guys on just yet. Although, if I go into ambush stance, uh, not great, not terrible, but we'll see if we can't catch one of these guys. If they do attack us out in the open, I have no doubt that we can defeat these guys. It's going to be tricky, but I'm sure we can do it. Let's declare war. Hopefully he'll uh, he'll attack us, and then we can attack him in kind. Um, so we are broke, so I'm just going to wait. But hopefully these guys will split up if they don't see us, at the very least. I might declare war on, you know, Talapheim or something. If these two fight, then we can just take all this real easy. Okay, so Fess is still going. Um, but these guys did split up, so we can get rid of Walric and destroy Krudenbold, I think. And if Fess decides to follow that up, that's great. I can take him out, and then I can take out um, her gig. Although, well, it does have a larger garrison. So that's absolutely fine, because it has the smaller army in it. God, everyone's dying, huh? Grow your forces, recruit 30 new units. Yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. We'll get a nice standard. Lovely. Um, some favour, some grimoires. Wars rage the, uh, the length and breadth of this land. In such times, only the strong can hope to survive. Build your forces in order to meet the threats that face you. Sure thing. So yeah, let's um, As fate demands. let's get Wolverick here. Okay, we're gonna fight it. It does say that it's a pyrrhic victory. I'm sure this will be very, very straightforward. Just you wait. Okay. So we have all of our flyers. Uh, I'm gonna keep you guys up front. Zangles, I think we're going to hide actually in there. I think we'll take over this part. Well, occupy this part. Which I guess to make, means take over, but not in this context, so I don't know. Uh, you guys can hide? You can hide. Okay, good. You guys can both hide back there. Our flyers are obviously going to hop over in a second. Uh, so that's all fine. We have very little winter magic, but that's okay. We're just, we're just Zinch. We don't rely on magic. Don't be silly. Alright. Probably get you involved. Uh, you can hang out in the middle. You'll debuff everyone nearby. With your, uh, I don't know, you know, the cockatrice. Thank you. With uh, the petrifying gaze. You can see the air of effect there. It's not bad. It's not half bad. And I'm actually going to turn into uh, Scrag. What else am I? So they are probably not going to come for us, are they? But I think they might if I shoot at them. So these Chaos Warriors will take a absolute beating. I mean, the Marauder Horseman could absolutely mess me up. For sure. For sure. But we'll see, won't we? We will see. Start moving you up. Start moving you up. So, uh, yeah, a lot of Chaos Warriors. Like, a heck of a lot of Chaos Warriors. But, <laughs> we do a heck of a lot of damage, and... Stop that. We do a heck of a lot of damage, and armor-piercing damage. And also, Warp Flame is nice. Well, given that fire weakness, you know, for the other people to start shooting. That'd be nice. Pretty good stuff. Oh, <laughs> we have Scrag, the Slaughterer. No abilities on him, of course. No abilities. He does still have the items that he has. Um, you know, the Changeling has. 
the items don't change. Which I think is pretty cool, actually, because it means you can equip items that complement the person you're turning into. Which I think is rather cool. Nice. Very nice to see. <laughs> they got a beast of Nurgle as well. Oh, they're trying to hit me some spells, are they? Okay, let's get a little closer and see if we can get a nice raking shot across these guys. Or just shoot them again, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah, they're going to start being a pain. Oh, they're going to start being a pain too, huh? Alright, start running. Our barrier is saving us, we're fine. Okay, let's get you lot in. Let's turn your fire at will. I guess the cockatrice can run in too. <laughs> barrier's coming back. I like they're all running in single file. Sweet of them. And when you have this many Chaos Furies, and the damage is spread out amongst them so much. Just, they're never going to get through the barrier. We can take zero, you know, we took zero damage from that. Just amazing. Um, in fact, let's go deal with those Marauder Horsemen as well. Ooh. Okay, well we're up there. I hope we didn't get spotted. That'd be embarrassing. Oh, <laughs> we might get spotted. Amazing. Yep, they're all going to get dealt with. Lovely to see. Alright, shoot that way. Oh, and hi. Hi, fellas. How are you guys doing? Wow, yeah, they're doing terribly. They're already... They weren't even getting shot at yet, and they're already running. Yep, that's going awfully well as well. Just sucks to be Nurgle. They're just not. They're not as cunning as us, you see. Just not as cunning. Okay, well, that's just a silly lineup. Just, you can line up. It's still gonna be silly, but. It's fine. Alright, Marauder's next. I think the doggos are out of there. Uh, he's gonna be a problem, but I'll get my cockatrice on him. If I can find the sod. There he is. I like maybe get them to break first so we can push through them a little easier. Alright, go deal with the beast of Nurgle, please. Uh, these Chaos Warriors are looking a little bit frightening. Want to make sure they don't get to our flamers. Uh, okay, that seems to do the job. Okay, let's try. Get a nice flank on them. We can attack the Beast of Nurgle as well. With that chariot, it's not really their job, but that doesn't really matter. And now all these guys are going to have diminished. Uh, actually, let's go for that guy. And then we can rear charge into this lot. But all these guys having diminished melee attack should keep all of our very cheap units punching well above their weight. charge in there. Very good stuff. And yep, they're having a bad day. They're having a very bad day. Excellent. And they're about to break. I guess we can start rear charging with some other boys. Might as well, eh? Yeah, Cocktree still has barriers up. It's not even... not even lost its barriers yet. Amazing. Okay, let me click on something, please. There we go. Uh, yeah, Ogre Balls, you stay on there. I don't really... I don't mind if you get wrecked. And Scrag's been fighting over here. Gosh, there's anyone we need to fight. Alright. Get you back this way. Yeah, we don't even need to use any spells, apparently. Just kind of crushing it. Oh, definitely rampaging. There we go. Alright, that's a settlement destroyed then. With a hell of a lot of fireworks. Marvellous. 
<laughs> Good stuff. All right, decisive victory. Well done, guys. Okay, made some more money. Lovely. Got some grimoires too. But mostly, we burned that to the ground. And I have a feeling, oh no, we got the plague. Uh, minus eight leadership. That will cause us to crumble a little quicker. That's a little frightening. That's okay. Hopefully Festus will decide that he's going to come fight us now. And then we can turn into him and then destroy the rest of his uh, domain, which will be very funny. Yep, got the earthing rod. And we just unlocked the sour guts. You'll notice we're on level five, but we just unlocked a regiment of renown. That's because they've changed how regiments of renown are unlocked nowadays. Um, nothing too fancy. It's just they've lowered the levels for it. So you actually unlock the basic stuff before they're already obsolete. Because, you know, most of the time, like, you look at uh, the Empire, for instance. Everyone's played an Empire campaign. The Death Jacks archers. It's like, okay, good. They have, what is it, snipe? I can't even remember. But it's such a pathetic thing. You're like, then what's the point? There's just no point getting them uh, in, a, in a sort of a, a later, well, even even like a level 10 army. Usually you've got better units than that already. So Regiments Renown don't really get a big, uh, a big showing a lot of the time. They're pretty much just there to recruit if you need an army in a hurry rather than because they fit the army well, which I think is a bit of a shame. They shouldn't be the reserves, you know? That should be exciting. So anyway, a uh, few beings are equally as dangerous in death as they are in life. Uh, change is inevitable. It is foolish to fight it. Embrace the conspirators' knowledge and grow strong. Ranked up in a province with low seemed corruption. Well, okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna start going up now, isn't it? So, red hot jape. And now we have the abilities. So I have Scrag's abilities. Not his spells yet, but his abilities. Uh, get his golden hounds. I enjoy, because uh, it's doggos. You know, you love doggos. Okay. So, let's get these guys then. So, uh, their special thing is Sour Discharge, which is a horrible, horrible phrase, but they explode on death. So, as they start dying, so does your enemy. Which is really fun. Really makes them a good, like, frontline unit just to throw in there and sort of get murdered. Um, hopefully not too much. You do still want them back, you know, to, to explode again on the next uh, battle you do. But it is what it is. I enjoy that. Also, I love the fact that Regiments Renown will now extend to um, uh, Steam Tanks as well. That's just going to be very, very funny when we get to it. Uh, do I want to... Needling is still ruins? Nope. It belongs to ogres currently. Are you at war with them? No, you're not. Okay, I'm not quite sure what to do about the ogres then. I might just ignore that for now and upgrade um, supplies. I can afford to put my discoverability up a little bit. And if this does put down control, that might actually be a good thing. Because I'm not sure I want ogres to have this, because ogres are never going to make much money out of it. So we'll undermine them. So there you go, we have ways to undermine them. That's going to take ten turns to build. Ouch. And Castle Drakenhof. What else am I going to want to build here? Because I may do a similar thing here. Uh, although, getting extra chance to expand the cult sounds really good too. So I think I'll get that next. I think we'll start expanding the cults. So even though it's a chance, it's a chance every turn, so... It it doesn't take long before you start seeing it spread. So we're going to sit tight. Fest is going to attack us, probably. And that'll be that. It's you. Not even worth my time. <laughs> Fest just wants peace. Really? Yeah, how about no? And now he's attacked us. Excellent. Alright, let's get him. Okay. I'm really looking forward to turning into Festus. Uh, let's just put you guys uh, right out front. You're going to attack their Furies. For starters. we put you up top so you've got the highest range. Our Zangors. I'm actually going to hide all the way back here. And uh, we're going to rear charge. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> They're so silly. I love them. Alright, there you go. But this is what I mean though, right? Um, so many of these battles that we're fighting would probably be settlement battles. Not this one, obviously, we're getting attacked out in the open, but we would have already fought a couple of settlement battles by now, and just trying to maneuver these in the streets is so obnoxious. Just wouldn't have been very fun. Yeah, let's keep you back, actually. 
Uh, we're going to push you up as well. Alright, let's go get the Furies. And let's bring you up. You can start shooting at... Uh, yeah, Chaos Warriors, I suppose. Alright, what are you playing at, huh? So I'll probably try and get the Chaos Warhounds or the Furies as well. Yeah, we've still got barriers on you. But I would like to start trying to split up our enemies a bit. Oh. Oh. But yeah, they're very slow, Nurgle. So I feel like I can just sort of um, divide and conquer a little bit, you know? Tilt you round. Let's turn you into Scrag. And I'm going to bring my Zangles down to see if we can bait any of the enemies in. So I used a lot of ammunition, haven't done a lot of damage yet. Is it worth trying to shoot this giant instead? Maybe it is. Or you guys can just keep shooting them, that's fine too. Alright, Doggo's done. Oh, these guys are thinking about it. Nah, I think we really want to get the AoE, don't we? It does have quite a spread. <laughs> Alright, you run over there now. You guys. Go get those doggos. Everyone else start shooting. You run into. Alright, you're out of ammo, but that's fine. You can still go get these guys. Uh, so, we do have extra ingredients which put up our power recharge rate. Which means I can use more of these spells. I know. Fancy. So, you guys go for the doggos. Oh, no, they've got doggos over here, too. Alright, well, it looks like I have to fight these guys. Okay, absolutely trashed. Perfect. Alright, how's everyone looking? Pretty good, you still got your barriers going. Alright, Festus is in here. He's not really achieving much, though. Uh, did the doggos run? They did run! Which means we can run. Because we are much faster. Alright, I guess you can fly back this way, then. Yeah, give yourself some damage resistance. Let's keep using some spells. Uh, not all of you need to be chasing. Oh, I guess you do. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I'll bring you back. Yeah, you keep running. Yeah, this divide and conquer has worked out very well. There's just marauders, but that's fine. I'd rather not kill all of my own guys. Uh, a cockatrice is taking some damage. We'll pull him back a smidge. Scrag is fighting the Chaos Giant. Oh, and we can get some more magic as well. Let's uh, stick that on Modrabub. Okay, let's keep chasing these guys down. Let's attack that Chaos Giant. Want to get him killed. Guys, come on. Be on guard mode. So you're not as quick to uh, charge back into combat. Yeah, he's having a bad day. Festus is having a bad day. Aw, oh, we lost a unit. Shame. Yeah, those trolls aren't dying very quick either. That regeneration always works wonders on him. Go see if you can't get him. Uh, this is going to take some time. Go, go get him, boy. 
And you guys, not all of you, just one of you. Just want to pull back some of them so we can. Uh... Guys, guys, you're on guard mode. Come on, stop that. Okay, where were we? Here we are. Can you guys stop them? Ah, there we go. Now he's running. Good stuff. Let's pull you back. They're not shattered yet. Neither are they. Ah, oh, there we go. We killed him. Good. Okay, you keep chasing them. Let's line up all of you lot over here, shall we? <laughs> Scrag can keep chasing him. Alright, let's get some more magic, please. Good. Oh my god, guys. We've barely taken any damage, because, like, every time we run away, our barrier is going back up. It's pretty funny. It's pretty great. Ooh, they're a problem. Alright, let's go deal with them. They'll probably come back, but... Let's get you down here. No, oh, yeah, he's back as well. Cheeky sod. Alright, keep running this way. Alright, mess him up, guys. Mess him up. You lost sight of him, didn't you? Yep. See you, mate. And he's running again. Daft sod. Alright. Should be able to get rid of them pretty swiftly. Alright, let's see how good they are at avoiding spells. Oh, he's back again. Hello, hi mate. <laughs> and we shattered them. Done. Okay, you need to come over here for the rear charge, please. Okay. Your hand is Golden Hounds. Just help disrupt him a bit. Yeah, you guys can charge in. Oh, there we go. There they go. Okay, that was pathetic targeting. What are you doing? I locked the group and told them to charge. They all just started running off over there somewhere. So some nerglings. Oh, you need to start crumbling. There we go. Yeah, you start crumbling. And once you crumbled, we'll have one. Good stuff. I do like that the demon units, being the strongest ones, are the ones who are going to crumble any time they lose a fight. It really does help out having to not fight him again. Or her. You know, who can say? Alright, close victory. Alright, we lost a unit, which was basically all of our losses. Kind of a shame that that took the brunt of the damage, really, but uh, that's okay. I'll live. Um, let's get... We've got Armored Destiny, which is very nice. Nice we can have that equipped. Um, yeah, let's get Devour Captives. Let's just put our replenishment up for everyone else, because we are about to attack her gig straight away. Okay, the Bear Sondling have been destroyed. The Red Eye has been destroyed. We've received a plague again. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, always doing that. Uh, and let's get ourselves a many-eyed tribute. I want to start getting Zangor's and things. Uh, Zangor's really nice and cheap. A nice cheap unit. And we've seen how useful they were in that last fight. So we got a vanguard with something. In like a very ranged heavy army. It's very scary. Really helps us drag the enemy in a few different directions. So Armor Destiny has been equipped by anyone. And we can now turn into Festus. Which I think we are going to do. Because we do have abilities unlocked already. Which means we can use his like crazy heal or damage toggle, you know, thing, which is really, 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 really good. Also, spell intensity up is nice too. Just more powerful spells. Uh, extra physical assist while transformed. 
extra armor, charge bonus, and speed while transformed is amazing. We could actually have a really fast Festus. We call him Dr. Fastus. Not because he's been fasting. <laughs> he's a big boy. Uh, and he has spell intensity. Sure. Alright, so we're not going to have... Uh, oh, and we got more Kaltu Branchman Rate and Vigor Loss Reduction for the, you know, for having killed it. That's awesome. The Dark Apothecary may be in need of a doctor himself after tangling with this one. And a Disc of Zinch has just been unlocked for Modrobob. Very nice. As part of the binding ritual, Screamer bodies are flattened and transmuted into unlikely aspects. And uh, defeat this guy. Really? Why him? Alright, well, I mean, I can do that. And just a bit of cash. Might as well. Yeah, I'll give it a go. Uh, and he was marching, so we can catch him without issue. Uh, but first, we do want to make sure that we turn into Festus. I have already done that. Okay. I'm very excited to be doing it. I didn't want to mess up. Okay. We really are just, like, able to turn into the largest, slobbiest characters. <laughs> it's like Scrag and this guy. It's pretty great. Anyway, do we need to fight this? I mean, not really, right? I can just talk to resolve. That's okay. Uh, of course he wants capers. He wants lots of capers. Nom nom nom. Uh, yeah. Mm. Money. Money's fine. Alright, we're going to take out her gig in a minute. Um, Helmet Failback may decide to come and attack. He might. Uh, we've got a lot of money now, which is good. So yeah, we did indeed defeat him. Uh, Great Zenith gazes into the Well of Eternity and is granted a vision of the Servants of Ruin. Their mage fire scorched corpses strewn across a blood soaked battlefield. We must make it so. We did make it so. Ah, there we go. Needlings under new management. I probably don't need to bother with that then. So let's cancel that and just upgrade what we already had. And let's start getting income instead. I know it's pathetic right now, but I'm hoping they will actually upgrade that a bit. Um. And what else we got? We can put up Zinch Corruption. We can put up all corruption there, which is fun. There we go, that'll spread the trickster cult. Discoverability is only plus 20. When it gets to 100, that's when you're in trouble, by the way. Um, although enemy stuff will lower the threshold of, of how high you get up to. Um, so, you know. Many more discoverability many equals more bad. Void Wrangler makes our Forsaken Chaos more Mutileth Vortex Beasts better. That's kind of cool. I can't wait to get a Mutileth Vortex Beast. Those things look amazing. They look really cool. And let's get 1,000 faces. Okay, we can... We've kind of nailed the whole turning into enemies thing now. We have all of their spells and abilities at rank 7, which is insane. Really, really powerful. So there. Let's move on. Okay, win 10 battles with a hero embedded in the army, huh? Oh, we're already at 6. Cool. It's nice that it records it total rather than from uh, where you were. That's kind of nice. We'll be there pretty soon. I do like a helmet, it's cool. They are very good. Uh, so, one thing I want to do, actually. Oh, he does have the armor destiny equipped. What else we got? We've got spell shield. We've got the obsidian trinket. We've got earthing rod. So, nothing great. Um, but. We can at least get it all equipped on this lad. I do love that he has an orb of Zeech. That's very fun. It's actually really good to have, because having like just cheap spells like Searing Doom, um, you can spam it a lot more, knowing that they'll be a little bit cheaper, and knowing that you're not wasting the magic that you want to use for your lord. So as a hero, that's a really good thing for a hero to have. Hello, Vulfram. How are you doing? Doing well? Uh, again, we can probably just sort of resolve this. And raise it to the ground. And it'll probably get taken. Probably get taken no. by Helmut Fowerback. Probably. Uh, prismatic plurality. What does this give us? Uh, decreases cooldowns. Passive ability, huh? That's fun. I like that. I like that a lot. So you cast, and it makes other stuff quicker to cast. Hmm. Lovely stuff. All right, let's head to Brass Keep. We'll head back down here once they've taken it. Probably take that back over. Then I don't know where we're going to go. Uh, maybe we head to Altdorf. Um, sack it. Uh, well, install the cult there. But we defeat it in battle. Install the cult. Make loads and loads of money from it. And then drive around in our brand new steam tank. That sounds pretty good to me, honestly. Uh, so yeah, more grimoires. 
and supplies. We're getting 16 per turn now, which is quite good. Alright, moving on. And we are getting attacked by Mr. Fowlback. And actually, this will be probably quite difficult. Uh, I'm not sure if both of these can reach us. Though. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. I'm wondering, basically, if I retreat, will, will one of them be able to... Will they both still be able to reach us, or will one be out of range? Uh, I think we're going to fight them all, though, instead. I don't see this really being a problem. Because he has mostly cheap units, so if we throw in uh, Dr. Festus with his damaging aura, they're all just going to melt. So, yeah, it's the crossbowmen that are a pain, though. We'll need to chase all of them off with our uh, uh, furies. But yeah, it should be fun. Let's do it. Alright. So, um... Yeah, reinforcements are going to be here relatively quickly. I think we're going to play more aggressively this time. Uh, blue horrors can... Really? Okay, what what changed that means I can have everyone bang up? I don't remember being able to do that. Alright, well everyone can vanguard now apparently. I'll take it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, game. Uh, yeah, that feels very odd. Is it because Festus has that ability? Not actually sure. I didn't think I was able to do that. Uh, that's a good surprise. You know, as far as surprises go, that is one. Alright, do I go behind and over? No, I think I'll just fly straight over. Yeah, let's just, um... Hang on. Okay. That ought to do it. Okay, let's turn to Vestas. Uh, we chase those pistoliers. It's a dumb idea. Okay, you're already in the fight. Harbinger of death or whatever. And then we can do some uh, streams of corruption through these guys. That sounds like a giggle. You start shooting them and I'll be attacked in the rear, but that's okay. Um, Alright, they're going to start suffering some damage. Okay, let's grab them. Uh, Festus is already doing great for us. Love to see it. Uh, Blight Boil. Let's blow them up. Yeah, Zinch is another... Um, uh, not Zinch. Nurgle is another faction that I've not played a whole lot of either. Because, again, just so slow. His army is so slow. Uh, and so I find the battles get really boring. You know, I hate to be so critical of everyone. But that is actually a huge plus for this game broadly. Even when there's stuff that I find just isn't for me, who cares? I have a million other campaigns to play. So um, it works out rather well. Okay, keep chasing if you would. Uh, that was... I mean, yeah, that's what I wanted you to do, I suppose. Oh, some of my Furies are having a bit of a, a bit of bother, aren't they? All right, you're doing great. You guys start shoot him now. You need to get the heck out of there, Jesus! Oof, I do not want to be losing him. That's a powerful unit to have just like explode like that. Oh boy. Ooh, that was scary. All right, they're all getting chased away. All right, let's bring you over here. Yeah, you keep them busy. Uh. Alright, you guys keep chasing the uh, crossbowmen. And. Oh, I don't know, I'll try. Nope, that's gonna miss completely. Worth a try. Alright, how are you not doing? You're doing pretty well. Um, 
Oh, a flame has just ran into combat. That's a bit silly. Where's my cockatrice? Do, 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 do. Oh, you're over there. Right, let's get you over here. Deal with that guy. <laughs> Dawn Festus just running in on his own. Sure, why the hell not? You know, besides the fact that that's uh, very reckless. You know, besides that. And yeah, he's doing better. That sucks. Uh, right, I want you to withdraw. I just don't want to lose for stupid reasons. And you can run in over here. Uh, you weren't supposed to run in, silly. Be back over that way. Yeah, you're damaging everything nearby, which is hilarious. Uh, oh, and I can also put on damage reflection. They start attacking him. That's fun. Alright, let's get over here too. Alright, how are you doing? Doing well. Doing okay. Alright, stream of corruption, please. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. I will take it. Alright, let's have you charging. Uh, Furies aren't doing so hot. Let's get you out of there. And yep, Cocktree dealt with them nicely. Let's pull you this way. Pull you this way. Alright, good. I mean, Festus is kind of crushing it over here. Let's let's give him some damage reduction as well. I mean, he's damaging all of this stuff as well. How much damage have we done with him? Almost 20,000. Not bad. Not much in terms of, like, gold value, but that's... It's kind of how it works, really, isn't it? When you're fighting against nothing but swordsmen. Ah, good. We killed... Uh, who was that? That wasn't Farback, was it? I've forgotten who we're fighting. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, let's drop that on him. And that's going to be game... Oh no, don't go! Ah, there we are. <laughs> Good lad. Nice. It's hard Bodrobop do anyway. 10,000 damage, only 600 value. Yeah, it's just nothing but spearmen and swordsmen. That's what happens. That's what happens. Just enjoy the uh, fireworks a bit. Wow, you guys did very well. Again, 900 value. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Such cheap enemies. God, I really do love the... Uh, Sort of Zinchian flames. I think so cool. Weird little curls and things coming off them. Very fun effects. I'm going to enjoy this campaign. That was pretty good. We've got Relic Sword as well, which I guess someone will have at some point, or I'll blog it or something. We'll see. Uh, let's go with Casualty Placement Ray. It was Wolf from Hertwig. Not uh, Fowlbag. I don't know where Fowlbag is. I think he was one of these armies, but I guess they fought some vampires? I'm not sure. Who did they fight? Oh, it's actually Cheech Corruption. We have actually managed to corrupt the heck out of this place. Even though all we have is Drugenheim. I guess just running through it can, like, contribute it quite a lot as well. There's more vampiric corruption in this area. Anyway, speaking of corruption, we do need to try and get our corruption up here. All of the tights are going to be down by five. So we need quite a lot. Um, plus five, but that's discoverability plus 100, which is a little steep. That puts up all corruption up a little bit. But again, discoverability up a huge amount. Uh, if I max that out, it's plus three. Uh, oh, that's plus 12. Okay. Yeah, let's do House of Havoc then. Yeah, that sounds good. Nice. Ah, so you can see here, they have uh, got a slight um, advantage in in seeing us there. You can see they've got 10 from building, so it's... Yeah, it'll be easier to reach that with discoverability. Uh, so, Karak Norn got destroyed. We also got uh, a trickster. Extra chance of stealing magic items. And we're stealing their entire identity, so, you know... Yeah. <laughs> There's a trap behind this trap that would be a joy to spring. Amazing. And yeah, Relic Sword as well. Scourge of Mankind. We defeated humans a fair bit. And that has actually um, ticked up our tally 
for land battles in the area. As soon as we get 15 of those, that's another scheme done. So deep within the crystal labyrinth, the Weaver of Fates pulls at the strings of time, thus do his myriad servants grow in strength and wisdom and unnatural pace. So Lord Recruit rank goes up, and Hero Action Success Chance goes up too. Uh, don't need to assassinate him. I'm probably never going to do that. Can you even assassinate? Oh, I can try. Uh, there's Echo Death Metal, right? Great name. Yeah, I'll try and assassinate him, why not? I never bother with this sort of thing. Wow, look at him scooting around. <laughs> I could not tell if that was success or not from his reaction. He just went, SPLIFE! Like, what's that mean? I have no idea. Uh, research technologies. Well, I mean, we're on it, mate. We're on it. Ooh, crystal pendant. About 14% water save. I like that. It did work. Okay, apparently when he goes, SPLIFE! You're, you're doing well. So, Modra Bob, the old keep orb keeper, our iridescent horror, has successfully wounded Echold Death Metal, belonging to the Fekundites. Brilliant. Yeah, sure did. Got a bit of money. Shield of Patolos. Good stuff. Okay. Let's have you start heading that way then. Although, actually... Let's slow down a bit. You are going to need to stock up on some more boys. Uh, so let's get these boys, even though that is like all of our money gone, which is very disappointing. But, more Zangors. More Zangors is more fun as someone pr presumably says at some point. It's probably me. I reckon I said that just now. Uh, Perplexing Meddler is very, very good too. That's kind of bonkers, actually. Where's my staff? Bring me my armor. No, that <laughs> that suit has no shoes. Who's responsible? This gives us uh, plus 25% uh, winds of magic. Sorry, it gives the enemy plus 25% magic cost for all their spells in the local region. Minus 20 armor for all of their armies and minus 15% speed for all their armies. That's just so good. I hadn't even seen that one yet. That's great. Uh, we will soon be able to get his like big boy awesome things which is cool, uh, rank 12, so almost at his really elite things. So uh, hero cost down for cultists, hero recruit rank up goes up for cultists, also uh, guardian for embedded uh, heroes, which is nice. Parasitosis lowers upkeep in enemy or raised territories. Um, and it puts upkeep up for your enemies, puts down their casualty replacement rate, puts up your own. Wow, that's really good. Symbiosis, uh, Allegiance is cheaper for getting allied stuff. Allied stuff also has lower upkeep. Uh, reinforcement range goes up for allied armies in local province, and allied armies actually get better replenishment. So a lot of a lot of skills and abilities the change like has for just like improving and weakening factions, which I think is really fun. It really makes him it really like suits his sort of subterfuge themes really well. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, allied recruitment cost goes down faction-wide. I like that. Reload time reduction. Plus 25% for units recruited via allied recruitment. Excluding siege units for all armies. So that's really cool. Extra melee attack. And extra melee defense for allied units. That's really powerful. Actually having allied units have bonuses is something I really wish we'd seen more of. Um, I think that'd be really nice. I think there should be like some generic skills that just improve... Um, some of the basic stats, you know, just something like this, where it's like, you know, your basic units um, from allied recruitment get, you know, extra missile strength and melee defense and melee attack. Just some just small bonuses across the board, because they always have such a small amount of them in an army and they don't get any bonuses. And it'd be really easy just to give them like quite broad bonuses for like a small skill point investment, just given the fact they're going to be such a small amount of your army. I think it'd be really nice to see that. And, you know, obviously it'd compound with characters like this one that specialise in it. I think it'd be cool. First come, first served. Uh, extra campaign movement range after raising an enemy territory. That's kind of cool. Oh, no, that's just being in territories. My bad. Okay, that's nice. Enemy armies in local province uh, have less movement. And you have more movement when you're in enemy territory. And also control minus save for the local province. Some good stuff. And Stork for the army. That's horrendous. I love it. And reinforcement range up by 50%. Yeah, really good stuff. Really good stuff. But yeah, perplexing meddler though. That is frightening. Absolutely frightening. Yeah, some good stuff. I'm really going to enjoy this campaign. I'm really going to enjoy this one. Um, but yeah, we are making excellent progress. 
was. Uh, final transmutation. Sounds great. Lovely. So he will obviously have to join the army again. Oh, although we are a little low on space. I think I'm I'm going to wait a turn in case something tries to attack us. Um, but I'll probably get rid of some Furies. We have a lot of Furies. But I don't think we actually need that many. They just seem to be more useful than more um, blue horrors. So, you know, that was fine. Um, but yeah, we are going to end the episode here, though. I feel like we made a jolly good start. And I can't wait to play more of it. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, so I can only play to turn 75 in this embargo. Uh, I forget the date that the next one's in, but I'll be able to carry on the campaign later. I mean, I assume I'm going to get to turn 75 before we, you know, get to that next embargo. But it's okay, because if that's the case, I'm going to be throwing out um, a different campaign anyway. And then we'll have Mother Ostankia later on. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm a bit loosey-goosey with the schedule at the moment, because I haven't been well. You know, like I said, I'm recovering from the flu or something. Um, so I'm playing it by ear right now. So <laughs> expect more content, okay? And to do that, comment, like, and subscribe, and hit the bell, and do all that stuff. And if you are thinking of picking up the DLC for yourself, or any past DLCs, um, there is a uh, link in the description you can follow, and I will get a cutback for that, which is, you know, really helps support the channel. And uh, I know that the, this DLC is more expensive than previous ones. Uh, let's not get into that debate. I mean, seriously, I'm shutting that down as soon as it starts. I'm bored of that debate. But... If you do get it from my revenue share link, then I get a larger cut from that. So just think of it as being charitable to the content creator rather than, you know, giving it to greedy studio bosses and all that luck, right? Anyway, up to you. Um, feel free to watch more before you make up your mind. No pressure. But if you do want it, the link is there. Anyway, guys, uh, take care. Have a good one. See you in the next one. Bye.